today I'm going to be doing a little review of the MA slope trend filter. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite NINZA indicators. Uh, today is August 29th. Uh, I'm going to do a little review of some trades I took during the New York Open on the NQ uh, on a one minute chart. And as with any indicator, I don't like to rely just on one indicator alone. I like to use uh, at least a couple other factors. So I could show you uh, one of the things that I do. I'm just going to draw some support and resistance lines before we start the playback here. Uh, we got these lows here. Price touched a lot. Got a lot of touches there. Price touched a lot right there. Uh, here's the gap from Sunday. Uh, it starts ranging right about right there. Near the whole number. Got some ranging there. Another little range right there. So now I've got some levels of support and resistance marked off on my chart. Uh, I can zoom back out. See we're doing a little bit better here. And I'm going to go ahead and add the Ninza MA Slope Trend Filter Indicator. And that's what it looks like right out of the box there. I'll show you how I use the indicator. Uh, I tend to like my charts pretty simple and clean, so take off the logo and the instructions. You can change the moving average that it calculates the slope on to any of these different moving averages. Uh, I like using the 20 d EMA. I'm going to leave the smoothing on, but you can smooth that line with any of these other moving averages. Uh, you can change the method that it calculates the slope. Uh, all different kinds of parameters that you can customize and find something that works with the instrument you trade and the time frame you trade. I'm going to leave the bar enabled, but I don't need to see the outline or the bias. And I don't need to see the background. Uh, there's three different alerts that it'll print. The trend start, which is when the slope starts. And then there's a, a resuming arrow that'll appear if you want. I don't, I don't use either of those. I only use the slowdown to look for reversals. It's these dots. It's what I find most useful for the instrument that I trade in this time frame. Uh, I'm going to change the bearish marker to red. I like the standard red and green color themes the best. And you can change what markers it prints. You can write words or symbols. and It's all fully customizable to however you like. Uh, and then for the moving average slope, the histogram line here, I always like to match the data series width that'll thicken it up here. So click apply and, and this is what I like my chart to look like. So I'm just going to do a little review of some of the trades that I took today during the New York Open. That's the time frame that I trade 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the first hour or two. And as you can see we're coming up right around to 9 o'clock pre-market. I've got all my support and resistance lines drawn. And if you don't know how to do those or you don't want to do that every morning. Uh, NINZA sells a bunch of other support and resistance indicators that are really good. But let's scroll out here and see what happened today in the New York Open. So here we are coming up to 9.30. There's the 9.30. Here's the New York Open candle at 9.31. Uh, you know, we're already have moved down pretty low overnight and uh, I'm just looking at all this support here versus uh, the resistance overhead. There's there's just way more space here and the MA slope indicator is printing bullish candles right now, the blue candles. Um, so I did I did go ahead and get long here and just had my stop below the low here. You know, right away it took off 525 to almost 675 points there, right at the open. And we got the 
bullish color on the histogram here. I'm always looking, I use this histogram in many ways, but if the histogram is this light blue, uh, I'm definitely looking for longs. And also if the histogram is this dark red, which means the bearish trend is fading, the slope is heading up, I'll look for a long when the histogram is a dark red as well. And here we have our first reversal dot about 10 minutes in and not really looking to take a short yet. Everything's looking very bullish. But when price comes back up and it's moved higher, price has moved higher, but the histogram has moved lower. Uh, that's that's divergence for me. I, I use this I use this histogram to measure divergence as well. It's one of my favorite tools for measuring divergence actually. So as we can see the price is higher here but the histogram is lower than over here when the price is at the same level. So when it closed back below I did go short there, had my stop above the highs and uh, 580 to 540 there's another 40 points potential. I'm just a scalper so I take little bits here and there. And then as you can see the MA slope indicator is starting to paint some bearish candlesticks. So we're definitely keeping our eyes open for shorts. And it comes up to this uh, resistance line that we drew pre-market. And now we're at the same level as these previous two levels. And the, the histogram is way lower now. So it's some major divergence and I, I definitely took a short here when the bar closed back down. And you know, there's another 50 points there. Potential. So I ignored this first reversal. I wasn't really looking for longs. The, the, the candles had turned bearish and it still hadn't made any new highs. So I wasn't interested in that reversal signal. But down here, this reversal signal, uh, the histogram has changed to dark red, the slopes heading up. Um, I was curious about taking a long there, and then when it went back to uh, from bearish to neutral, we see the original color of the candles appear. I was definitely more interested in taking a long. And when the histogram turned a light blue and this candle closed closed green I, I got in right there 545 and then it went back up you know another 55 points and yet again at this resistance line we had drawn we get another reversal signal and I'm seeing all these wicks on the candles and I'm looking at where price is here, and it's been there here and here, and this histogram is still lower than it was when price was up here before, so there's some more divergence right there. And when price closed below, this uh, resistance line, I, I got in, put my stop above the highs there, and wrote it down a little bit. As you can see, if we waited a little bit longer, we got more confirmation from the MA slope indicator. It started painting bearish candles and you know the market just dropped right back down to that other support line we had. And we get this reversal signal here and you know the market's clearly interested in going down at this point. Um, I'm not I'm not too interested in going long unless I see some other signals. Uh, we never get any bullish candles uh, and it's right back to where we opened at 930 so I just kind of wanted to wait and see what it's going to do here. It just kind of ranges a little bit and kind of waiting for a breakout one way or the other there. And uh, just the MA slope indicator kept us in this down move uh, looking for shorts and now this reversal dot 
Uh, this one I was very interested in. You can see we have divergence here. Uh, the price was much lower than it was here, but the histogram is a lot higher. So there's the divergence right there. And I did, I did hop, I hopped in somewhere in there, uh, rode it back up near this resistance line. It's like another 30 points right there. Then it's a little after 11, and I'm usually done trading by 10:30 or 11 at the latest. So I don't trade the afternoon chop, and uh, you can see that's just basically what it did: it chop around. So definitely, time of day is important. You want to have enough volatility to have your indicators working for you like they should. But yeah, that's just a few of the ways I use this indicator. The reversal dots, divergence in the histogram, uh, the colors of the histogram, whether I'm looking for shorts in the dark blue or the light pink, or if I'm looking for longs in the dark red and the light blue. Uh, it's, you know, it's a great it's a great indicator you can add into any system that you currently have and change all the parameters to make it work best for whatever instrument and time frame that you trade.